My fellow Amberlanders, dear soldiers of the Amazonian Revolution, Ground Zero fighters, I want to thank you all on behalf of the people of Amazonia for the sacrifices you have made for our homeland. I want to thank you all in the diaspora for your collective effort. I want to thank our mothers, the Takumbangs, the Twitter warriors, the bloggers, and all those who have contributed positively to foster our liberation struggle and to plaster a big smile on our faces in the year 2018. It has been a wonderful year, a year of great strikes, a year of tragedy, a year of hope, sometimes exasperation and desperation. But to sum it all, it has been a year when the resolve of the Ambazonian people have been tested and proven. Our determination has been calibrated and our vision for a free homeland well articulated. This wouldn't have happened without your continuous effort, without your stance to be completely free from Cameroon. This wouldn't have happened without you spilling your blood in the land of the Kuvali Kenya, in the land of the Abombis, to ensure that the 43,000 square miles of land bestowed to us by our Creator, nourished by the blood of our people, built by the ingenuity and savoir faire of our great minds, belongs to the Amazonian people. For all those who lost their lives in the year 2018, for all those whose freedom was taken away from them, for all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, I will invite all of you to join me to observe a minute of silence in memory of their time here with us. May God continue to protect them where they are as they watch over us as we march in our continuous journey to free our homeland. My fellow countrymen and women, I am a proud Ambazonian, not because I was born in Ambazonia, but because I am one of those collective who have shown the world what it means to stand up for what we value. I am a proud Ambazonian because of the determination of the Ambazonian people. I take pride in my heritage, in our collective heritage, because of our fundamental belief in freedom and coexistence even with those who bring us pain. In four days' time, it will be the 5th of January, the day Patasan, The man whose face, the man whose demeanor, 
reflects something very important in our revolution. The man who gave us pride when he told the regime that in the next few days, who, we will know who is in charge of Ambazonia. Pa Tassang's life, his dedication, his sacrifices for our struggle is something we can never forget. But most importantly, his pliant nature. His pliant nature is one which every Ambazonian should envy. We remember Seseko Ayuk Tabe. Seseko Ayuk Tabe is a gentleman who stepped onto the platform of our struggle at a time when very few knew him. When I met him the first time, I saw him as this fatherly figure. I saw him as this guardian. The smiles on his face keep aside the politics. The man, the family man, the man who stepped onto a plate, not knowing exactly where he was headed to, but believed in it passionately. Even as we tussled, we confronted one another. He remained a gentleman. Dr. Mfo, a man who has given his life in the past 30 years for different causes. I met Dr. Mfo in 1996 when he was the chairman of the Constitutional Affairs Committee of the SDF. From that moment, we became bonded together. He was a difficult guy. A tough negotiator. He defended the SCNC. He stood by the basic principles of the SCNC. He defended his points. But he believed in our overall freedom. He sacrificed for it. Went to jail for it. These men and others. Ndango Patrick. From the boreholes of the torture chambers of Kondengi. He spoke to us. His body shook. The beaming smiles that were on his face before he went in there. Snatched away by the torment, the tragedy, the torture. By a people we thought were neighbors, were good friends, were families. Tatingo, kidnapped from Boya. Tortured almost to death. Resurrected by unknown hands. To find himself in the dungeons of Kondengi. In four days time it will be one year. Since Seseko Ayuk Tabi. Pa Tasang. Professor Awasum and the others. Were kidnapped. Under difficult circumstances. Transported by the terror regime. I want you to think for one moment. Think for one moment, the moment they were kidnapped, all alone, with the enemies of their people, in the darkness, dangling chains around their feet and their arms. For what? Not for their wives, not for their children, for millions of people they have never even met, for a nation they are not sure was going to be free. Bundled into helicopters, not knowing if they will arrive their destination and what that destination would be. They didn't give up. Their families didn't even know where they had been taken to. Six months, seven months, eight months, nine months. We didn't know their whereabouts. We conjured from across the globe where they could be, what, what, what their fate could be. Locked in communicado by enemies of our freedom, the plunderers of our resources, the kidnappers of our women, the torturers of our people, snatched away from their families, from those who loved them, who cared about them, who thought of them, 
the lullabies they sang to their babies before they went to bed. Daddy wasn't around. The torment, the isolation. One year ago, the terror regime snatched from us patriots of ours, warriors of ours. Before then, they took BBC Manjo. They took Ngalim Felix. They took Pen Terrence. They took the Benjis. They took the Nelson. They took the Tatingos. They locked them up. 250, 2,000 in Kondengi in their jails. What was their crime? They stood up for the land of their birth to be free in the face of the world. To break the same air in the same breath. To dream, to have hope. To think about their loved ones, work for them, support them. They were denied the right to live in their own space, even in the land of squalor. By a terror system implanted by neo-colonial forces in the land of our birth. They raped us of our resources, savaged our coast, tore us apart, made us hopeless, took away from us any hope of a destiny. What living, dying, and fighting for. And when we stood up to act simple for equality, they tortured, brutalized our people. One year ago, remember, a man who stepped on the platform of the struggle, unknown to us, but a wonderful personality, despite the rancor and the politics of the struggle was snatched from his family, from us, from the Amazonian people, locked in the dungeons of the occupier, taken to a kangaroo court, sitting under the oppressor's flag. If you've never been angry, I want you to listen to Thomas Sankara. To get meaningful change, you require some degree of madness. Ambazonians, what Cameroon has done to us, I want you never to forget. The pain they have brought to bear on this generation, I want you never to forget. Not out of hate, but so that the next generation will remember and make sure they do the things they are supposed to do, never to go through this again. We are psychologically traumatized. We are nomads. Despite the fact that we have the most beautiful and endowed space on planet Earth to flourish, to appreciate what God has given to us, to transform our best minds into resources that give us a life worth living on planet Earth. As you remember, one year ago when they were kidnapped, you can't mourn. It's not enough. You can't simply hope they are released. It's not enough. What you owe these valiant soldiers of the revolution, locked up in the dungeons of the occupier, is your determination to make sure the day they will reach Boya, on the side streets from the Mongo to our capital, we are going to plant palm trees in honor of them. We are going to sing songs of freedom in honor of them. We are going to welcome them as heroes of the revolution in a free homeland. The only gift we can give them for the sacrifices that they have made is to fight, give our blood, our all to make sure Ambazonia is free. A free and independent Ambazonia is the only gift we can give to these valiant soldiers of the revolution for the pain, the sacrifices, the torture, the torment that they have undergone for standing up for what is, for all of us, our collective desire to be free. I want to thank them all. God should guide them. Give them hope, because for us out here, we will not rest until they come home as free people. 
dear soldiers of the revolution, you have done well. I want to thank you from the depth of my heart. We, the Ambazonian people, we have done well. We din guns, we shattered the myth around the invincibility of the brutal occupier. We believe that these causes alone were not the best way to resolve conflict. You shattered the myth around the invincibility of a savage regime that believe in the use of terror, disproportionate application of force in the land of our birth, kidnapping, torture of our people. You humble them on the streets of Kwakwa. You humble them on the streets of Bamenda. You humble them across the territorial space of Ambazonia. You showed the world that even as they conspire against our freedom, that you were willing to put your life on the line to make sure, to make sure one day Ambazonians live in a land that they call theirs, a free country. We began this revolution with a humble ambition to make the land ungovernable for the occupier. Through your skills, your collaborative effort from your blocks across the 13 states of our country, you connected through WhatsApp, you strategized through the social media, you supported one another, you collaborated where possible to make sure the occupier didn't have political control over Ambazonia. You took away from them the power of governance without consent. Because the overriding principle about governance should be based on the consent of the governed. And that until that time when you mandate a system that is legitimate and legal, no one will govern you without your consent. That's why you bled on the street. You defended your block and your neighborhood to make sure the wrongful people who have implanted themselves over our land do not have the chance to govern us. You achieve a milestone in this revolution. You projected power. You projected ownership. You showed the world that you were willing to sacrifice to earn what was rightfully yours. Fellow citizens, in the coexistence with Cameroon, our land produced almost 63% of the GDP. Our land is endowed with natural resources. It has become a resource curse where the presence of the occupier was based simply to rip us of our resources without reciprocating in development. Your resistance on the ground sent a powerful message to the occupier. No taxation without development. No taxation without representation. You made sure you defended your block to stop the ex wanton exploitation of our timber. You made sure deforestation was stopped to protect your environment for the next generation. You made sure that they could not exploit resources from the CDC without taking care of the workers, building them better homes where they stayed to work, banking the money in Ambazonian banks. You penalize them. You increase the cost of the occupation through your action. My fellow Ambazonians, the strategy of liberation by a people that are hemmed in like us is based on our activities on the ground. How we pull our resources together. How we pull our mega resources and forces together to fight the occupier on our own terms, in our own spaces. And in 2018, you showed the Ambazonian people from your actions on the ground, that you are the masters of your own destiny. Fellow citizens, dear soldiers of our revolution, your actions on the ground 
was not in isolation. It was carefully choreographed to link up with international actions by Ambazonian citizens in the diaspora. Because despite the fact that you bled the regime on the ground, despite the fact that you made Ambazonia ungovernable, despite the fact that you increased the cost of the occupation, despite the fact that you stopped political governance of our country, that alone wasn't enough to inform the world, the international stakeholders, what has compelled you to rise up in resistance against the oligarchy. We mobilize our people in the diaspora, in town hall meetings, through demonstrations, through actions across the globe. We sensitize our people. The knowledge we acquired of our history in less than one year was more enriching than the knowledge we've acquired sitting in constructed classrooms, being taught revised history. That knowledge gave us the possibility to bat at the level of the international community, to sell our cases to other citizens, to project the Ambazonian revolution as one rooted in legality, in sociology, in the respect of peoplehood, human rights, that we were victims of an international conspiracy that robbed us of our right to be free, to determine the political and economic system over our country. Your actions on the ground and your actions at the level of the diaspora made Ambazonia a household name at the level of the international system. You were able, through your actions, you were able, through your voices, to get the powerful House of Lords to convene on behalf of your name, to defend your own history, to articulate your suffering, to project your own story, to sell your case. It didn't happen by accident. It happened through your effort, through your determination, through your sacrifices, through your collective endeavor as a people, that despite our differences, we were able to project Ambazonia as one, a collective people, determined people, willing to write the last chapter of the oppressor in their homeland. The House of Lords spoke for you. The Bundestag spoke for you. The U.S. Senate spoke for you. Fellow Ambazonians, you did in two years what more powerful people, more powerful systems have not been able to do for hundreds of years. You rose up from the dusty alleys of Motengene to the plateaus of Ndok, to the highlands of Boya, Kilo Mountain, to raise the case of a people long thought to have been conquered. You gave hope to the next generation. You gave hope to the modest. You gave hope to the delinquent. You gave hope to us in the diaspora, living a nomadic life, without a homeland to call our own, a nationality to be proud of, a flag to worship, an anthem to sing. You gave us hope through your blood, the general Ivos, the amigos, the big numbers. You gave us hope through your sacrifices on the street with ding guns, with your bare bodies. You showed that Christ who gave his life for mankind was in all of you. We thank you all for your sacrifices. We make a solemn promise to continue this revolution to make sure Ambazonia is, is free. Fellow citizens, dear soldiers of the Ambazonian revolution, 
The international system is important for our liberation. But rhetorics alone will not change our fate. I want to thank the Swedish government for being the first state to raise our case at the Security Council. I want to thank the US government for following up at the level of the Security Council. I want to thank the US Senate for debating our case and passing a resolution. These are important milestones for these powerful houses to be able to speak about a distant people almost 12,000 miles away from their own shores. More than 130 parliamentarians of the Bundestag spoke for us. Thank you. Thank you, the FDP. Thank you, these parliamentarians. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Despite the fact the United Kingdom reneged on its obligation to Amazonia, it's never too late. So the debate in the House of Lords gave us hope that it's never too late. But I call on Her Majesty's government to do more for the refugees, for those displaced, for the women suffering in the bushes. Our case is unique. Our plight is unique. Our pain is palpable, even more tangible. I call upon them to do more for the Ambazonian people. I want them to translate those rhetorics into action that will stop Cameroon from perpetuating its policies of brutality in the land of our birth. To save the Ambazonian people, to save our cultural heritage. I want to tell the Cameroonian people, you are the land of the Rujimilas, you are the land of the Mbembes, the Masing Benjamins, they are big at your fields. Vous êtes un pays, the NS Wangi. These nationalists who fought for Cameroon, the glory of Cameroon has been taken away. Cameroonians must realize, Cameroonians must realize that injustice in Ambazonia is a threat to justice in Cameroon. Cameroonians must understand that the pain we go through has an effect on their own lives. And they must rise up. They must rise up and think of the nationalists who bore their own land with their blood, the NS Wangis, who bled for the actual freedom of Cameroon, hijacked by the Aijos, hijacked by the Paul Beers to perpetuate evil. Cameroonians must understand our struggle is not against them. It's against the system that has robbed us of our own land. And that they must rise up to overthrow the beer regime. That is the only way they can have peace. Cameroonians must understand it is for their best interest for the beer regime to be replaced with a regime that will recognize the independence of Ambazonia, that we can live as mutual parties within the West African sub-region. And I can promise them that we will apply the Boya Peace Initiative that was developed in 1996 on a transitional system that will protect the territorial integrity of both nations, protect the both economies.
Vous êtes un pays digne. Rise up, Cameroonians, and overthrow the system. Rise up. We will make sure that the country that is our neighbor is governed by individuals and institutions that is reflected in constitutionalism. based on the consent of the people. We will not leave with a savage neighbor, a neighbor that plunders, make wars against its neighbors. Fellow Amazonians, I would like to remind Nigeria. Let Nigeria understand it is surrounded by all Francophone countries. Ambazonia is the only English-speaking country that is your neighbor. Nigeria must know the independence of Ambazonia is for its own interest. Nigeria must understand that if it wants to pride itself as the giant of Africa, the country that made peace, in Sierra Leone, the country that made peace in Liberia, that saw and caused and fostered the overthrow of dictatorship in the Gambia, cannot be seen to be collaborating with an autocratic system in Cameroon against the interests of the Amazonian people. Let Nigeria understand that one-eighth of the population of Amazonia Almost a million people are Nigerians. That we share a common heritage. We share a common border. We have something together. And to have collaborated with Cameroon for the kidnapping of our comrades, for their deportation to Yaoundé, undermines the prestige of Nigeria. Nigeria must have understood that Cameroon is a country that practices systematic torture. A practice that has assumed peremptory status under international law. And that these people that were deported from Nigeria into Cameroon, some of them with refugee status, will be locked up under conditions of inhumanity. And that the United Nations Human Rights Committee in the Akwanga versus Cameroon case, in the Goji versus Cameroon, Titiahonjo versus Cameroon, Mukong versus Cameroon, has declared Cameroon as a country that does not respect the premise of Article 14 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights to guarantee fair trial to all those detained. And that even the dissenting opinion in the Akwanga case, denounced the military tribunal as an institution for fair trial. Cameroon, Nigeria, that prides itself as a powerful state, must respect international norms, must respect international rules, and cannot be seen as a collaborator in rendition, in the practice of torture, to allow cross-border incursions into refugee camps in Nigeria to kill Amazonians. I call on the Nigerian people to support our case for independence. I call on the Nigerian people to know that our pain must be their pain. Our suffering must be their suffering. Nigeria must understand that it holds an important place in the continent of Africa and that it must take its responsibility as a powerhouse to ensure that the historical injustices over Ambazonia are corrected because 
as Europe has learned with the movement of millions of people from Syria and the instability it has created in Europe that led to Brexit, instability in Turkey, continuous prosecution of the war in Ambazonia by Cameroon will lead to an influx of hundreds of thousands of Ambazonians into Nigeria. That will have an effect on the Nigerian economy. It will hamper peace and security within Nigeria because Cameroon's cross-border incursions. It is for the interest of Nigeria to ensure that Ambazonia is free. Fellow Ambazonians, the year 2019 must be the year we make Ambazonia a contender. We began this revolution as underdogs. We are still underdogs. We've raised our flag in many places. We have been singing our anthem. We have reclaimed part of our homeland. These are peculiar Ambazonian identities that are important for our independence. Ambazonians have created their own currency. This currency will challenge France, French hegemony in the Central African region. It will be an eye-opener to many countries in Africa that to gain true independence, you need to control your financial and monetary policies. And it also begins with creating your own currency. We now have our own currency, and I call upon all of you to be part of this Renaissance project, this project of hope. That is the only way you reclaim collectively your identity as a people. To make Ambazonia a contender, we must ensure that our men on the ground, who are on the first line of defense, are properly armed. The day we become a contender, we are going to change the international narrative about the struggle. We are going to ensure that the appellation of the Northwest and the Southwest are taken away, that we are referred to as Ambazonians. That will be the time you know we have become a contender. To become a contender, we must project power. We must project political cohesion. We must conduct ourselves in the international realm as a people who can live from being liberators to becoming governors and who can manage the period of transition with a mindset and institutions that will guarantee international peace and security and ensure that there is continuous trade in the West African sub-region. To become a contender we must make sure we continue our international mobilization to project the Ambazonian story. But overwhelmingly, we must change the din guns to more sophisticated weapons to make sure our gains are never reversed. To make sure the gains that we have gained thus far are secured. You must continuously sacrifice. You must continuously project power. You must conduct yourselves even with differences in public as a people who know where they are coming from, who know where they are, and who know exactly where they are headed to. This is very important if we are to be recognized as a state. Because you might free a homeland but you are not recognized as part of the international community. Ambazonians must understand. Leaders must understand that their words matter. How they conduct themselves matter. And that we don't utter words, proclamations that we cannot defend. The world must take us seriously.
that is being a contender. I like to promise our soldiers on the ground, no matter under which group you fight for, as long as you fight under the same flag, sing the same anthem, that you will have the opportunity in 2019 to make Ambazonia a contender. Make no mistake, we do not sleep. We work 24 seven to make sure you have what it takes to defend your block, to defend your lives, to protect the lives of our people, to protect the territorial space of Ambazonia. And 2019 is a turning point in the Ambazonian revolution as far as projecting power and authority is concerned. This is a solemn promise I bring to you all fighting on the ground. In the past years, despite some sad occurrences, you have collaborated. Despite the difficulties, we will want you to continue to collaborate with one another. Your life matters. Work together where it is possible. Where it is not possible, maintain your lane without provocation, without skirmishes. Your life matters. The lives of our people matters. You must desist from committing horrendous acts on the ground like beheading, extortion and kidnapping for ransom. We, that is not Ambazonian. We reject those practices. And all those who engage in extortion, beheading, should know they are violating the code of conduct. should know they are violating the premises of the Fort Geneva Convention on the laws of war. You must conduct yourself with integrity. You must defend your block with ferocity, but with dignity, with respect. Fellow Ambazonians, in 2019, we must know that our priorities must be ground zero. We must clear our land of the savages from Cameroon. We must clear our land of the murderers of our people. We must clear our land of all the collaborators who continue to project the one Cameroon mentality against the interests of the overwhelming majority of the Ambazonian people. We must focus in making sure that we elevate on governability to controllability, controlling territory, making sure we move IDPs in secure areas where we can use wonderful foundations like the Aya Foundations. I congratulate the Aya Foundation for the marvelous job they have been doing to make sure they provide humanitarian assistance to our people. And I call on all of our people across the world to support the Aya Foundation. They've been doing a marvelous job. They are non-political. They don't adhere to any po political ideology. They focus on the dignity of the Ambazonian people. They focus on the right of our people to live a life with dignity and integrity. So we must clear territory to make sure we move IDPs from the forest and bring them in spaces where we can provide to them some level of sanitation, some level of protection, some level of knowledge on where we are and where we are headed to. Ambazonians, this is a collective fight. Those Twitter warriors, those supporting the refugees, those fighting on the ground, those knocking on doors of the international community. In all our own small spaces, we are making a huge contribution towards advancing the collective interests of the Amazonian people. I reject all those who try to collaborate with Cameroon. I reject all those who want to organize conferences in our name to perpetuate the status quo, 
This is the time for all Ambazonians, whether you are the Cardinal Tumis, the Agbo Balaz, the Simon Munzus, to realize that the majority of the Ambazonian people want a land of their own. It is time you abandon the path of coexistence with the brutal occupier that has still declared war on us yesterday. That despite your effort to talk, they are willing to use guns. You cannot federate with people who do not even recognize you. You cannot coexist with people who do not even recognize you. It is time for all of you to abandon this failed project of coexistence and join the majority of the Ambazonian people to make the last stand on the land of our bird of the Kuvali Kenyans, of the Bakwere warriors, the Abumbis, and all the warriors who've died for Ambazonia, to make sure we protect Ambazonia, we'll make sure we give hope to our people. The world is watching. We aren't going back to those dark days when they ripped us of our resources. We aren't going back to the days where they crumbled our economic institutions. We aren't going back to the dark days where they appointed government delegates, where they ruled over our municipalities, appointed chiefs and funds who sold our lands to them. We aren't going back to the dark days of rape, of torture, of not knowing who we are, hating ourselves, seeing ourselves in the image of our oppressor. We aren't going back to those dark days, Ambazonians, where we were called Biafrans, les ennemis dans la maison. The burning desire to be free is in it to every mankind, whether crippled, whether fast runners, whether those walking slow. The desire to be free in the land of your birth, to make your laws decide those who govern you, is inherent in our existence. Let the world know as the first democratic country in Africa, we still hold true today as we held yesterday. That the consent of our people shall be the basis of the formation of any government, the formulation of any policy. That's why we fight for the little things to be able to go to school where we are taught to become assets to ourselves and not liabilities. To ply the highway from the Mongo to Boya in 30 minutes without being followed by Police officers who are corrupt without paying toll gates to occupiers. To be able to fly air amber and be, take pride in your own heritage. To be able to live in Victoria and walk in Bamenda. Build your own seaport where you create opportunities for your own people. Use our creative abilities to turn sunlight into energy. Make sure we capture the rainfall in Deboncha. To make sure we can still cultivate in the dry season. Eat mangoes in the dry season. Cultivate cassava in the dry season. To make sure we build a space that we can transfer to the next generation. With pride. That we live for something. We stood for something. We gave our life for something. We transfer to the next generation, generation something more beautiful than it was bequeathed to us. That's why you struggle. For the ordinary girl who hasn't got the chance to go to school. For the mother who hasn't got medicines because they don't have money. You struggle to be able to have hospitals that take care of all those who don't have money. For those who have money. To build a health infrastructure that is able to take care of diseases within our own territory. To build a legal system that presumes you not guilty. That provides you with lawyers and legal aid to be able to defend yourselves. We have hope in Ambazonia. 2019 should be a year of hope. Should be a year of less division. We must collaborate. You cannot dominate anyone. We have lived under domination from Cameroon for 57 years. Under a system of hierarchy. Of master and servant. Leaders must walk on a pedestal of equality. Mutual respect. Tolerance. Coexistence. Support for one another. That is the only way we can speed up the day. 
we set our captives free. We build a better country for ourselves and the next generation. Be quick to those yet unborn and those still striving for a brighter future, something more enduring, and something worth fighting, dying, and giving your life for. My fellow Ambazonians, I'm a soldier of the revolution. We are all soldiers of our liberation. Let us focus on liberation. There will be the time of governance. And during that time, we must still respect one another. I have hope in Ambazonia. I have hope not because it is easy, but because we are powerful. Collectively as a people, as I have said before, we will fight together, go to jail together, smile and cry together, hope together, mourn together, because after all, we are Ambazonians together. God bless you all. I know the new year is not happy. In any case, happy new year.